Hello and welcome to another Learn Learn Scratch tutorial. In this tutorial we're going to show you how to make a maze runner type game. So here we've got a little rocket and it's moving, uh, moving up all the way up through a maze that keeps on scrolling down. So it's like a top scrolling maze type game. The idea of the game is you've got to navigate it all the way through to the end of the maze and when you get to the end of the maze Whoever out of the two players has got the highest score, you can only see one player at the moment, um, wins. So how do we get a score? Well, each time we touch a bit of the yellow bit there, we increase our score, which I'll show you in a second. Uh, let's see if I can just show you there if I move over. Oh, nope, just missed it again. Let's try again. It's quite hard, this bit of the maze. There we go. There you can see. So the player one score is increasing because I touched the yellow bit. But you'll also notice if I touch the black bit, then it will be game over there you go okay so there's the game we're going to make uh let's get started so we go to scratch and we click on create there we go and we don't need scratch the cat so let's just get rid of scratch goodbye scratch and we're going to create our first bit of our background now our background is actually uh, although it looks like one seamless long tunnel, um, it's actually made up of lots of individual tiles, each tile put on top of each other. So we need to create the first of the tiles. So we click on, uh, click on paint a new sprite, click on the paint color, and I'll just click on black, and then let's paint it in black. So there's your first tile there, and you can see it on the screen, there's our first tile good stuff and there's our first tile and it's going to go here we're going to draw a bit of the maze up to the top so we're going to use the brush tool and we'll just make it a bit bigger about that sort of size you can obviously experiment it and i'm going to use that lightest of the uh, the main pinks there that's a little bit that's a bit bigger because it's the start of the screen right at the start make it nice and wide because obviously you want a bit of space for your new your players to get started and then you can make it narrower there we go and we'll just do the first bit of the maze there good excellent so there's the first bit of the maze we can fly up through our, play, our um, rocket we'll put it on a bit will can go up in between that area there which is perfect why is that spider let's get rid of that spider delete it says the first part of the maze and that tile what happens is at the start it starts in the middle and then slowly but surely the tile will actually move down 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 all the way down but there will be another tile just above it moving down at exactly the same time uh, which will be a different tile and that will actually look like one continuous seamless tunnel we hope so let's get started so how are we going to do that well, first of all, we need to keep track of um, whereabouts we are in the entire game. And the thing we're going to use to keep track of that is uh, the scroll value. So we'll create a new variable because we need to keep track of where we're scrolling. And we'll call it scroll y. Because uh, y position, uh, so the y coordinate is what we're going to be changing. It's going to scroll in the y direction, the up and down. If you can see here, there's the Y. Down the bottom, it's minus 180. And as I go up, you can see it goes up there. So we need to keep uh, set it at the start. Set the scroll Y at the start to zero, because it'll be dead center. There we go. So at the start, set the scroll Y to zero. And then what we do is forever we'll change the scroll y by minus one. Uh, oh no not set so I change scroll y by minus one so this is minus one there we get make that a bit bigger this is the value here you'll see that when I start to press uh, when I press start that is the, like the scroll the y position the global y position for everything. And there you can see it. if I click start, it starts to go down at some crazy pace. Don't worry, it won't go down at such a crazy pace in a bit uh, because we're going to do other things. 
uh, which will slow the whole thing down. There we go. Good. So we've got the global scroll. Why? Put that on the stage. The reason being is that we don't want to put it on any one particular sprite, uh, because if we do put it on one particular sprite, we're, we, we might forget which sprite we put it on. We also might actually duplicate it by accident. If we put this code onto that sprite, we're going to duplicate the sprite in a bit. And if we do, it'll end up obviously changing by minus one here, but then minus one for all the others. So it will move too quickly. So we put it there because the stage is going to keep track of that scroll Y. Now what we do is we go back to our sprite. There we go. That's going to move. And what we say is, OK, at the start of the game, let's move it to the middle. Go to, let's set it to zero, zero. Right in the middle, zero, zero. Good stuff. And we need to keep moving it down slowly but surely. In order to do that, we use a forever loop. A forever loop, anything you put inside the forever loop, will just keep on repeating. And we want this to constantly move down, just like that. Okay, good. So what we do now is we say, okay, create another variable. And this is called my scroll y. Because this is the scroll y just for this variable. There we go. And make sure it's just ticked for this sprite only. That means that when I right click and duplicate this sprite, which we're going to do in a bit, each one of the sprite has its own variable and its own position can be stored separately. Otherwise, all these tiles that we're going to create will be in the same position and it'll all go completely wrong. So my scroll Y, make sure it's ticked for this sprite only. OK. And what we do is we say, OK, set my scroll Y to, now here's the uh, clever bit, use a plus good and we set it to whatever the global scroll y is so whatever that position that that one there the global scroll y plus 360 times zero uh, now, 360 times 0 is 0, obviously. Um, so so the, in this particular one, it will just set it to uh, whatever the scroll Y is, and it will just set it to there. And then what we do is we set my Y coordinate oops, to whatever my scroll Y is, just like that. So what it'll do now is this bit here will calculate where this particular tile is supposed to be in relation to the global score of Y, this global keeping track of where we are on the maze. And then we set my Y position to whatever the result of that calculation is. So now, hopefully, if we press start, there you go. It'll start to move down the screen. So that first tile now is slowly but surely moving down the screen, which is good. So now what we need to do is we're going to temporarily duplicate this to show you what's going to happen with the next tile. Um, so what we do here is let's just call that tile one, tile one, and then we right click duplicate and there's tile two. Now at the moment, because it's got identical code, it's moving in uh, exactly the same place, which we don't want. So how do we change that? Well, what we do now, this is why we did this bit of code here before. Instead of putting times zero, we put times one. And now if you press start, there you go. As you can see, it is now going here above it, which is good. Now, there's a bit of a problem here, because if you notice here, first of all, we've got this bit of a line, which we're going to deal with in a minute but also is here it looks really really messy there and there it looks really messy you can tell that it's just been stuck together that's that's no good so how do we fix that well what we need to do is we need to get this bit here the line bit there to match that bit there now you could mess about trying to find out exactly where it is and coloring bits in and stuff like that but there's a little trick to do this and what we do instead is we click onto the costumes and we flip it and there you go and now as you can see 
this join here is perfect on the second one. And what you could do now is you go to the costumes, you've got the perfect join at the bottom. Now we can just click on that black bit. We've got the perfect join. Oops, where's that? Let's try that again. Make sure we click on that one. We've got the perfect join at the bottom, which is all we needed. Now we do a big black square to get rid of the bit at the top. And we go back to the drawing board. And we can add the second tile to our our game. So now, there we go. You can see we can have two tiles or three tiles. If you, uh, we won't do this, don't bother doing this just yet, but if you look here, if we duplicate it again, you can start to see, change this time to two, because it's the second tile number two. Uh, and then again, flip that there. And now, you'll see in a minute, ignore that bit there, we're going to deal with that in a moment. And we'll talk about that, what's actually happening in that in a second. Now, once it does it, you should be able to see, there you go. So there, you can see now we've got three tiles working all the way along, which is nice and good. Already, uh, even after just 10 minutes, it's already getting quite near. So... Well, first problem, here we go. How do we deal with this bit at the top? Well, one of the problems with Scratch, let's just delete these other two tiles because we're going to need to do a bit of work. Delete that and delete that one. We're going to recreate them in a minute. Um, one of the problems with Scratch is because it's for beginners, um, they don't want you to let you move your tiles, uh, make them disappear. Because otherwise, if they disappear, you might struggle putting them back on. Um, whereas if it always forces it to appear there, um you, you can always you can always get at it which means it's really good for beginners so you don't lose sprites off the stage um uh, and good for kids but it does have its limitations so what we need to say is okay if it is up here and we think it should be out of sight let's just hide it and if it's not up there then we'll show it so what we do now is we do a little bit of maths and what we say is okay if the uh, I'm have an or in there. If the absolute, where is that? Uh, an absolute. Da, da, da. If the absolute value of my scroll y, uh, which means it's basically the same as my scroll y, but if you notice here. There you go, minus 64, 64, there we go. It takes whatever number it is. If it's minus 64, it converts to 64. Um, and what it says is, okay, if the value, in fact, let's just show you how that works. But at the moment, it's minus 64, so the absolute value will be 64. So what this means now is we can say, okay, if the absolute value of... Um, my score y is greater than the height of the uh, the size of the stage uh, and the size of the stage here if you look here it goes down to minus 180 up to plus 280 so add those two together times it by 2 360 so if the absolute value of my score y which uh, is greater than 360 in other words if it's all the way up here above the stage or it's all the way here down below the stage. Then what we do is we hide it. Oops, just realized I got the wrong if statement there. So if the absolute of my scroll y is greater than 360, then we hide. Otherwise, we show. There we go. Perfect. And that now means that at the start of it, when if it's right up at the top, you can't see it just yet but it will actually hide it if it's right up at the top. Also, you noticed before, you can't see it just now, but we had that little bit of a line there. Uh, it's a bit of a glitch with Scratch, and I don't know exactly why it does it, but to fix it, all we'll do is we'll just do a stamp here after the show. And what that does, it just stamps it. If it's in view, it stamps it so that um, you'll not have white showing anywhere. Good. Now that's pretty much all of the code you actually need for the background for these tiles. So now we've got the background complete. 
we can actually just duplicate that. Let's just check it's working by flipping it. And now, hopefully, if we press start, oops, I've just messed something up. That doesn't look right, does it? Oh, that's why I put this stamp in the wrong place. That's why. Uh, I know, but it should be right. Why is that not working? Do, do, do. Oh, it's because I'm missing a tile, that's why. One, two, let's just duplicate that. Ah, there you go, that's why. A little bit confused then. Of course, that's got to be a one. 360 times one. Let's just duplicate that. Oh, no, that's no good. Delete. So now that's the duplicate of that. Let's just check that's working. Ah, that's okay. Brilliant. Good. So that's starting to work now. And what we'll do here is we'll just duplicate it again. This time we need to duplicate the third one. We need to flip it. So we flip the third one, which goes like that. And we change that to times two. So just to show you, times naught for the first one, times one for the second one, times two for the third one, and so on and so on, each time remembering to flip it vertically up and down. So now, hopefully, if we go right through there, That's about there. That's pretty much perfect. Notice there was the, um, there we are, there was a little bit of uh, lines coming through. That's because I need to untick these variables there. Uh, untick the variables and stop. that'll stop those lines from appearing, the little lines. There you go. Good. Sorted. So what I'll do now is you can, obviously, you can keep going with yours. What I'll do is let's just click on that one. That costume there, let's go back to here, let's change it. So let's start now, um, go back to the brush, change it back to the pink. Now we'll start doing some of our more, more difficult levels. There we go. So let's try a zigzag saw level. There we go. So there's our zigzag level, duplicate that. And now this one, let's... Go back to our scripts. That's coming number three. And then go to our costume. Flip it so we've got it there. Again. Uh, bring that back down to there because we only need the bottom bit. And this time. And what we'll do this time is I'll make it a little bit smaller. And you can, oh, not that much smaller. That's a bit too small. About there, maybe. And what we can have now is we'll have two possible options. They come through like that. There you go. So you've got your nice, easy option straight up. And we'll put a bit of yellow in here so that if you go for the slightly more difficult option on this bit, um, although it's, you're more likely to die, you're also more likely to get extra points when we code our uh, spaceship or whatever we're going to use in a minute. So you can either choose the easy option, the safe option, or the slightly more risky option, but with more rewards. There you go. So there's our tiles. We've got our basic tile set. It should be working fine. And now we can actually move on to coding our player. Uh, which is quite easy. So here we'll, let's click on choose a sprite from the library. And I'm going to use the uh, the rocket ship. Where's that gone? There's the spaceship. So we've got the spaceship. Costumes is a little bit big there. So let's click onto the costumes. Let's make him smaller. Good. And for the sake of this game, turn him to the right hand side, I think it is. We'll find out in a minute. Because uh, we're going to need that in a minute. And let's get rid of that one. Here we go. Move him down there. So, 
what do we need to do with the rocket? Well, let's get started. First of all, we need to uh, say, okay, when we start the game, let's set my speed to zero. Do we need to speed? Yeah. So my speed. Uh, click for this sprite only, because that way it only uh, it only uh, affects this sprite speed. So that when you press to the accelerate button, it doesn't make your other rocket ship, if you've got two player version, speed up. So and at the start of the game, you set the speed to zero. Good. And we also do another variable, another variable. This one called, uh, in fact, let's call it P. P1 score. There we go. Make sure this one's available for all sprites. And the reason being is at the end of the game, we need to check who's won. And if this sprite's only available inside of here, it makes it a little bit harder for checking who's won. So what we'll do here is we'll do player one score. So set the speed to zero, set the player one score to zero. And we'll just drag that down there so it's right down the bottom, which is good. And what we'll also do is we'll just hide the rocket right at the start of the game. The reason being is that when you press start, if the rocket is over here touching the black, which it might be because if it's uh, for a previous game, if you then press start straight away and it's showing, it will just go straight to the game over screen. So that's no good. So what we need to do here is we'll hide it and we'll just wait. Uh, let's say wait for half a second or 0.2 we'll do 0.2 seconds so we'll wait a little bit that gives it time so that when you press start it gives it time to move these all of these things here back to uh, back to how they should be at the start all the tiles back and then we'll show it just uh, makes your game a little bit more robust good so we'll show uh, but before we show it we'll move the sprite to uh, there we are. That was my little trick, by the way, at the start of the game. Press start and then stop. And now, oops, let's just show him. Let's click on that show there, so he's there. And we'll drag him to where he needs to be at the start of the game, which is there. Now, the reason I'm dragging him there now is because if you look at this go to here, as I drag my ship about, it automatically changes where the sprite's got to go to. So we'll drag in where we want it to start, which is there. And now we've already got the go to. We'll just put that above the show. So what will happen is when you press start, it will hide wherever the rocket ship is. will hide it. Then it will move it to the right spot. And then we wait a little while to make sure it's all set up. And then we show it, which is brilliant. Good. Also, we need to get it to point up. So point in direction zero up. And because you've set it that way around, also, by the way, click on set costume center and make sure the center is right in the middle of that sprite about there. There you go. Good. And now, so hopefully you press start. Oops. Uh, OK, it's moved to the wrong place because I didn't set the center first. So what we'll do is move it to where it needs to be, which is there. And we'll just replace that one with the correct codes now, with the correct coordinates. So let's just check. Yay, there we go. Brilliant. My rocket ship's a little bit big. I think I'll make them a little bit smaller. Otherwise, it might get a little bit difficult. There you go. Good. So there's my rocket ship. He's all sorted. And he's now in the right position when I start the game, which is good. Okay. Now what we need to do is we need to get it so that if we press left, he turns to the left. If he presses right, he turns to the right. Um, so let's have a go at those first. So again, this is going to go in a forever loop because you're going to keep checking forever until he dies. Uh, and you'll need two if statements. There we are. If, here we are pressing, uh, let's have a look. If the left arrow is pressed, we're going to turn left. Uh, minus, uh, let's do, we'll do seven degrees to the left. There we go. And save again with the right arrow if the right arrow is pressed. So if the left arrow is pressed, turn minus seven. 
uh, or seven degrees counterclockwise. If the right eye is pressed, you turn seven degrees clockwise, which is good. So let's just try that. There we go. Brilliant. Perfect. It's swinging round on a funny angle, and the reason being is because I made it smaller, I need to click on that center again and just make sure it's spot on in the center. There you go. So that's more like it. Now it's turning left, it's turning right, which is good. Excellent. And what you also do need to do here now is say, okay, if we press the up arrow, we want to speed up. And if we press the, uh, if we if we're not pressing the up arrow, we want to slow down a bit. So what we do here is say, okay, if we press the up arrow, so let's have a look. Oh, oh I need to be an if else. My bad. If the up arrow is pressed, up arrow, good stuff, there we go. So if the up arrow is pressed, then we can change my speed by one. Change speed by one, good, there we go. Uh, otherwise, change the speed by minus one. Let's just try that. There we go. In fact, we don't do one. We'll do, let me make it move a bit too fast. Let's do 0 0.3. It's about, and then minus 0 0.3. That should be okay. So what we'll do now is if we press the up arrow, you'll see, let's have a look. If we press the up arrow, you can see the speed will increase. And then if I let go, the speed will decrease, which is good. Uh, of course, it's not moving the spaceship yet. And the reason being is because we then need to do here, move, but we're not going to move 10 steps. Here's the clever bit. We're going to move speed steps. And that hopefully now will mean, there we go. So as you can see, if I'm pressing up, it goes up. If I let go, it's not doing anything. But you might have noticed it's going a little bit crazy. And that's because there's no maximum speed. It will just keep going, and uh, the longer you hold it, the greater, the greater the speed will increase will be, which you might want your game like that, but it's a little bit chaotic for me. So what we're going to do is we're going to change it slightly. We're only going to increase the speed if the speed is less than 1. Uh, there we go. And this will put a cap on the maximum speed. So if the speed is less than 1, then we increase it. And we also do the same with if you're not holding the up arrow key and the decreasing speed. So what we can say here is, okay, if the speed is greater than minus one. So if the speed is less than one, we can increase it. If the speed is greater than minus one, we can decrease it. And that hopefully now will mean there you go. So that's a little bit more, a bit more sensible on the speed there. A little bit more sensible, which is good. Whoops. There we go. Actually, oh, so that's going backwards, isn't it? Okay. Well, maybe. All right. There we go. So there you go. And uh, maybe just set that to zero. Sorry, we'll change that to zero because otherwise. I notice there it's a little bit of a glitch where otherwise it starts to go actually go up. There we go. That's that's a little bit better. There we are. Good stuff. That's better. Good. So that's more like it. Good. So you can go forwards, but you can't go back. And there we go. Perfect. Good. That'll do fine. Okay. So we got all the speed going there, which is good. That's fine. Now what we need to do is we need to set the bit that does the scoring and also does the game over events. So same thing as before. We're going to create a new loop this time because it's going to be doing the scoring and the um, the game over. Uh, and what we'll do here again, let's just wait for a second or wait for 0.5 because we don't think, want things to happen until the rest of the game is set up. There we go. We'll just wait for a little while. And then forever... And we're going to do two checks. What we're going to say is, okay, if we are touching, let's just click on that one there. Oh, it's color yellow, isn't it? In fact, actually, what we'll do here is I'll put some 
I'll put some yellow in there. Let's add a bit of yellow. Let's do some at the start. There we go. A bit of yellow. So we'll do that start game as well. Some little bonuses at the start. So what we could say now is on our spaceship. Okay. If we are touching the color, uh, click there, and then go over to your color. You notice wherever you move to, that touching color will change to the corresponding color. So there we go. If touching color yellow, then all we need to do is just change the score, uh, player one score, by one. So hopefully now you see this as we start to move through. Uh, there you go. You can see the score is increasing, which is good. Brilliant. That's perfect. So if player, if touching colour yellow, then change the score by one. And now what you can say is okay. If touching colour black, if touching colour black, then we can broadcast. Here's this player one. Player one loses. There we go, good. Player one loses. Uh, let's have a look. That's good. Play all score. Okie dokie. So if touching colour black, player broadcast player one loses. There we go, good. We haven't actually got a player two yet. Notice how I'm not actually, um, I don't create the second player or do any of the bits and bats on it until we've got it all just about working with one player. But let's, uh, let's add another player now. So let's just right click duplicate so there we've got two players now this player here let's change his color to a blue sort of color there you go again you could spend more time doing it but i'm just showing you an example so now we've got two players uh, and here on player two what we need to do now is we'll create a new variable call this player two score there you go, play two score, move that down there. And this time just adjust your code so that it says player two, player two. Speed you don't have to adjust, and the reason being is that speed is uh, a internal variable, as you can see there, put a shape spaceship speed, uh, spaceship two speed, they're internal uh, variables so that you don't have to worry about those. Just check all these. Now this one here, uh, Instead of using this, the, the arrow keys, we're just going to say, okay, A, uh, right will be D, and forward will be W. There we go. And let's just check all those. Change speed. Yep, that's going to be my speed, speed, and that's speed step. So let's just press start, and hopefully you can see, there you go. So I've got two separate players, and if you notice here, two separate lots of scores. But what we also need to change here is broadcast. Obviously, if player two touches the black bits here, then it needs to say player two loses. Good. There you go. So, player two loses. There we are. As opposed to player one loses. So, how do we do it now? What do we do here once they all lose? Well, what we need to do now is... Uh, we need a new tile, a new sprite, so we'll click paint new sprite. Uh, in fact, actually, we'll choose a new sprite from the library and we'll use lettuce. And let's do P, there you go. And what we'll do here, let me show you a little trick, because this sprite here is going to say like player one, uh, P1 wins or P2 wins. So how are we going to get to do that? Well. We create a sprite, get the first sprite for the P, and now instead of adding another sprite, we add another costume. But so we go back to letters, and uh, let's have a look. P1, there you go. Actually, I used the other colour, so I'm not used the. Let's get rid of that P because it hasn't got numbers on that one. We we'll use the blue P's. So P. There we go. There's P1. And just add all of the letters that you need. So we're going to do P1 wins. So all we need to do now is P1 
W I N W I N that is Yes, there you go. So, how are we going to do this? Well, click on the first letter, the P, move it here out of the way. In fact, I can move it down there as well. So, move it here, and now what you do, the, the clever bit, is you drag the other, uh, the other costumes into this costume. So, they're all going to appear on one costume. P1, V, W, I, N, S. There you go. So, that's player one wins. Uh, delete all the other bits there. P1 wins. So there's P1 wins. Uh, we need to duplicate that costume and get another letter for the player 2. There we go. Click on P1 wins. Press delete to get rid of that. Drag 2 in there. There you go. So now we've got a player 1 wins. Uh, a player two wins, uh, and you need another one. Actually, let's do one more for draw. If they happen to get the same costume, that's quite rare. But let's say we've got draw as well. D. So again, click on the D and then drag the other letters in. Okay. There we go. And get rid of all the others. So now we should be left up with three costumes. And this is uh, P1 P wins, P2 wins, and then draw. Excellent, good, okay. So now what we say is, okay, well, how is this going to work? How are we going to get to the end of the game? Well, what I'll do for the moment is, I'm just going to delete, temporarily delete, uh, you can add them back in a minute, but just to show you, delete the last two, um, for, let's, uh, let's have a look, delete those last, oh, no, I've just done that wrong. Uh, delete that last two there. And what we'll do here is we'll say, okay, here at the top of this costume here, I'm going to change the color. I'm going to do a green bit here, a green fin. The reason what we're going to do that green bit there is the green is going to be the finish line. So what happens is it goes all the way along, all the way along. And obviously you can change this in a minute and do your own bits. But the idea being is that as soon as you hit the finish line, as soon as you touch green, then it's game over and we decide who's won uh, or whether it's a draw. So the idea is you keep going until you get to uh, that green and then it stops. Unless, of course, one person's already died. So what would we do here? Well, what we say here is we say, OK, let's have a look. Uh, when you press start, we're going to hide. There we go. And there's going to be three possible events. When I receive player one loses, uh, when I receive player two loses. Um, so if player one loses, what we need to do is we need to change our costume uh, to player two wins, because obviously if player one loses, player two's got to win. Uh, same as the other way around there, player one wins, and then we show. So the idea being is that if player one loses, we switch the costume to the one that says player two wins, and then we show, and vice versa there. And the only one that we're missing here now is when I receive, and this one is finished. There we go. Finished. So when I receive finished, uh, we display, we work out who's won. Now this is slightly more complicated in that we've got three possible outcomes. So... What are the possible outcomes? Well, uh, let's have a look. So, 
So, three possible outcomes. Let's put them all there. So, if player one's score is greater than, that's the greater than thing, if player one's score is greater than player two, then we need to do uh, this bit here, just like that. So, looks, switch costume to player one wins, and then show. Uh, and then we do the same thing. If player one's score is less than player two, then player two wins. And then show. In fact, actually, we'll just do the show at the end. Might as well rather than keep putting show. And then the final one, if they're equal, then we do uh, draw. And what we do here is we do uh, show. And then what we also do is we need to stop all the scripts. Otherwise, that background will keep moving. So we'll do stop all, uh, stop all, stop all. There you go. So. Uh, the only thing we need to do now is when uh, when I receive finished. So when are you going to receive finished? Well, we need to say here, okay, uh, a similar thing to here. If touching color, oh, no, no good. If touching color green, there we go. If touching color green. Uh, then what we do is we broadcast finished. Uh, where's that? Uh, da, 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 da. Broadcast. Oops. Finished. There you go. So if touching color green, that's all right, green, isn't it? Yeah, if touching color green, then broadcast finished. Make sure you got that on both of them. Uh, if touching color. Green and broadcast finished. Good. So now, hopefully, when we press start, there you go. So both players are there. They're both moving on. They're both scoring. You can see down the bottom at the moment, player two's winning. Uh, let's just crash. There you go. So player one crashes. So it says player two wins, which is perfect. Uh, let's try again. This time, let's make player two crash. That says player one wins. Good stuff. And now let's uh, attempt to get all the way through to the finish line, which in this test environment of only two, we should be okay. Let's see. Do, 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 do. Who's won there? Looks like player one's winning. So it should say player one wins. There you go. There you go. So that's done. That's all perfect. Uh, so there's a working game that's fully working. What we'll do is we'll just have to hide the spaceship speed because we don't need that to show so let's oh, leave those two but let's hide that one there you go so game's all fully working that's all fine uh, improvements what can you do to make it even better well obviously we're going to need some background music i don't put that on because it's annoying for videos uh, but you can experiment with background music uh, you want some sound effects that would be really good so that when you press in the space bar it goes Psh, or something like that um, animations so a motion animation from the spaceship that might be useful so that as every time you press the a button or something or whatever you do to move forward it makes like little trails of fire out the back of it which is good uh other things you could do you could have different colors so that if you went on green or something not green don't use the same color but if you touch blue then you missed out on scores if you uh, touch orange, then you get a much higher score. Um, if you go on to red, then your player increases in its speed or, you know, all kind of things like that. Um, you could also make these much, much longer as well. Obviously, I've only put two tiles there for the sake of testing. But once you've got two or three working, the idea just keeps on going. Just keep adding and adding and adding as many as you want. Uh, I the, this sort of game, it's all about testing and making sure that your level works correctly. It's challenging enough, but not too challenging, and it's fun for all of the players. There you go. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this. If you do like the tutorials, then make sure you subscribe uh, and like the video. Uh, and any problems whatsoever, just uh, leave a comment in the YouTube comments. Okay, thank you very much.